button. And hey, hello. Happy Friday. Wind down. Happy Friday. Cheers. Cheers. Wind down. Now you have white wine today, Gina. I do. Just being a little, trying to keep you on your toes. I should have it where you have to guess the wine that I have in my glass. No, but that's not fair. That's not fair. No, and that's I not. see. Hi, Selena. I haven't seen you in so long. Hello. <laughs> welcome. That great, welcome. That was a great radio interview with you, too. Was no, that that, no, no, no. That's somebody else. Oh, that's I'm somebody else. Thinking, I would do a great radio interview, but no, that was Corey. That was Corey. I thought it was Celine. Corey. Celine. Yeah, Corey and Matt, and, and uh, that was great. So how was your how was your week? Um, it was very busy. I had a lot of we were we were cranking out a lot of interviews for the podcast, and so that was kind of this whole week was filled with lots of videos and podcast interviews. So that was good. How about you? Uh, busy, busy. We had a video shoot uh, on Tuesday. So that was exciting, starting a new series called That's a Great Question. I love it. Which which I love, I love, I love. And yeah. uh, then we were also working on our new online program. Very exciting. There's that echo all of a sudden in and out. And I have no so idea what that does. Yeah. Why that does that. I don't either. And I don't hear it. So it's always like I can't tell. Yeah. Um, so, um, so well, welcome everybody. If you're here, uh, say Helen. Hello, Helen. You cracked me up in the caption contest today. The do you want the middle seat? Literally laughed out loud. Literally laughed out loud, Helen. You cracked me up. <laughs> yep. Uh, Celine, are you? I don't think you're in the group. So, uh, oh, yeah. You need to join that. You need to join that group. It's fabulous. Great yeah. discussions. So and if, if oh, you're here, type hello so we can see you here. To me, it's always fun to know where are you tuning in from um, because, you know, even Tony and I are lots of miles away. I'm here in Denver, Colorado, um, where it's actually gorgeous weather the last few days and it's supposed to be really nice this weekend. So we might go skiing tomorrow. Well, that's, that's awesome. awesome. Yeah, that would be awesome. So. We're, we're tuning in, and this week, the, the theme kind of, I love how our themes each week kind of gel and come to be, and this week, several different discussions led us to this topic of courage, which I love. So, yeah, and it worked out that I did a radio interview. That's the one I did with Corey, and this was the topic, and one of the questions that I thought was really interesting, Annie from Beirut, oh my gosh. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, awesome. Annie. Hey. Um, uh, Annie and I go way back, way back. <laughs> um, so um, the, the question that came up is, what is the definition of courage? And yeah. so I thought I'd throw that out there. I certainly shared one on the interview, and I'll be happy to share it in a minute. But I'd I'd love to hear your opinion, Gina, and perhaps some other people out there. What what do we think courage is? Like what what is it? I know it is interesting because it's, it is such an interesting when you, when you really analyze what is courage to me, it's doing something that's scary or hard, but doing it anyway. Yes. Um, so I, I think it would be interesting to see if everyone, if, if everyone has different definitions of what courage is. And I, I loved when I was listening to your interview. Hey, Bob. Hey, um, Bob, thanks. you know, there's different, I, I don't know if you'd call them levels of courage because we summon up courage in different forms at different times, but it's always when we're facing some sort of adversity um, that you have to have courage to keep going and not retreat. See, that was interesting because in, when when I was asked the question, I don't think we have to be facing adversity, adversity to have courage. I think we we make courageous decisions all the time. And and Corey said, so do you have to be afraid to have courage? Like is fear an essential element? And the more I thought about it, I thought, I don't think it's fear. When I think about courage, I think of taking a leap of faith. If whatever you're doing requires you to take a leap of faith, and I, I, I think you're right, Gina, the traditional definition of courage is we're facing adversity and we've got to kind of plow our way through. Right. And, um, but in the context of our work, we talk about being courageous in your business all the time. And so I don't know that it's necessarily adversity. It's the ability to in our words, dare to be different, which means taking a leap of faith. 
But don't you think to take a leap of faith, you have to kind of have some fear of letting go of something? I, I don't know. Because yeah, that would be thing. interesting because you got to go, when have I ever been courageous when there wasn't some, I don't know if it's fear or anxiety or uncertainty, which kind of I look at as a kind of a fear. But if you're going to take a leap of faith, Gina, there has to be some kind of emotion. That's what a leap of faith is. Yeah, it means so. you stopped and said, okay, I'm going to do this. But the reason I prefer leap of faith as opposed to fear is, and a lot of people watching know this. Now I, I have, uh, I want to come back to your comment, Ellen. I love um, that. Ellen, that's interesting. I've done a lot of crazy stuff in my life, like, you know, leaving my law career to go work for Club Med and then leaving Club Med on a whim because somebody said I could sing in their nightclub. And people say to me that was really courageous. And I go, I wasn't, I wasn't frightened, but it was a leap of faith. And so this concept of a leap of faith, I think, is what, for me, uh, brings all of those possible circumstances when you could have courage. And then for us being outrageously courageous right. is that everybody would think you were off your nut. Like, everybody thinks that is just out there. Like me moving to Paris on a whim with no money and a business. Right. Right. So that's that's what I think. And and Alain's definition was the place between fear and recklessness. That's such that. interesting. Yeah, I do love that. Yeah. Because others may see you as reckless for making the decision. Right. And some may say, oh, you must be scared, which like you're saying, it's not necessarily you're scared. But to me, there is some level of emotion that makes me almost want to, I have to decide. I have to decide, do I want to stay here or retreat? Or do I want to take that leap of faith? That's where the courage comes in. I have to have the courage to do it. Because I think when we talk about our business, we all talk about wanting to do bigger things in our business. But why do some people know what to do? They know the steps to take. They know they've taken the course. They've spent the thousands of dollars to learn how, but they still don't, they don't do it. Courage. Implement. They don't have the courage. Yeah. yeah. And, and Heidi, um, I love this. Sometimes courage is forced upon us. That's really interesting, Heidi, because the radio show that I did this past weekend, um, the two gentlemen who followed me for the second half were prostate cancer survivors. And so we and, talked about that. Like they had no choice. Right. And Heidi's a cancer survivor. So that's yeah. interesting. That perspective of, yeah, sometimes, well, look at when you're, when your spouse leaves you and like I was a single mom, suddenly that was forced upon me, but I don't even think, I guess now I look back and go, I was certainly courageous, but I look at it and go, I just was surviving. You yeah, know, but, wasn't but you took a leap of faith. Right. I mean, I, I think you had to because when it's forced upon you and sometimes you don't have any choice, I was in a similar situation. So yeah. I think you just move ahead. Annie says courage is faith put in action. I love that one. Yeah, because you That's do have to move like you can hear everything that you should do. You can know everything you can do. But until you put it into action, courage, you don't really have courage. You have knowledge of courage. Yes. Uh, and then sometimes I think it's a muscle, like like going to the gym. And I, I think it's right. I think I think that's a great point too, Ellen. The more we exercise courage, and of course, it's all subjective, right? Because something looks courageous to somebody else, but like you and I go, well, I don't know. I just woke up this morning and decided to kind of do this, this sucker. So uh, it, it doesn't it doesn't feel like it takes courage. And sometimes fear brings clarity. That's, that's an so absolutely funny. great comment, Heidi, too, because. Uh, yeah, sometimes well, it makes us get rid of everything else that is not important in our life right now to deal with what we're facing. Right. And all of a sudden it becomes crystal clear. I have to take this action. And maybe that's what, you know, again, in business, sometimes we get to a pain point that's so great that we have to take the action. But what about the everyday courage that we say we need to force ourselves to do things that are so outrageously different that people will think I'm nuts and that's OK. And maybe it's not fear at that point. It's more that we put, and maybe it's that muscle, you know, uh, I'm going to choose to do the curls of putting myself out there and trying new things in my business because it's going to stretch and make me um, grow. Yeah. And I, and I think again, at least for me, it goes back because I know you're going to share some great examples and I'm going to share some great examples. And, and, and I think one of the things about courage in, in daring to be different and putting yourself out there in your business is for me, if it, it, it needs to kind of keep you up at night, that that doesn't mean you're not going to do it. It doesn't mean you're not excited about it. But if there hasn't been a momentary, 
I think I could be out of my mind. Like I'm going to do this anyway, but I think I could be out of my mind. <laughs> um, then, then it's probably not different enough. Enough. It, it's not different enough. It's got to shake you up. It's got to shake the marketplace up. And I can't wait. I, I, I oh, hey, Jim. Hey, Jim, we're going to, we're just going to share. Uh, a couple of more comments, and then I want you to, to share your example. We have a lot of comments today. Yeah, I love you it. Cancer diagnosis, I have nothing to lose, so I become more courageous. Oh, um, absolutely. So, Heidi, am I am I assuming that this is something that you uh, you have been dealing with in, in your life? Uh, yes, she says. Uh, yes, and does a lot of work with other people to help them be courageous through it. So that's yeah, interesting. I decided to master social media while in cancer treatment. Well, that again, uh, that's a situation uh, where you, you don't have, well, I suppose you do have a choice, but it's kind of thrust upon you. And so for those of us who haven't had to face that, we, uh, we are fortunate. Jim says, welcome, Jim. Courage can also be based on principles rather than fear. Deviating from the status quo. Absolutely, Jim. It's like, it's like having the courage of your <laughs> conviction. Right. right. Having the courage of your convictions, like the brands that decided not to do business with the NRA anymore or or, you know, the, those people, the, the, the brands that take a stand and say, uh, we're going to have the courage of our convictions and, and this is what we're going to do. So I but think that's you also think somebody in that organization had a little bit of trepidation and fear. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Totally. I mean, I, I still think, yeah, that courage comes out of I'm facing something that I'm uncertain what the outcome will be. Yeah. And maybe the fear is a fear of being rejected, fear of how people are going to view my brand or my business. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it was interesting because this week I, I'm trying to think how I came upon her video. I think it was just on Facebook, but I happened to find And ironically, my daughter's looking for a job and she has applied at all kinds of places. She's looking for a marketing position. Ironically, she doesn't want to work for me. I don't know why. Um, but she, we keep telling her, you need to do something really bold and different. And I happened upon this girl who did the singing resume and, and it's going viral. So she's been everywhere. I get to interview her next week on our podcast and she's just a doll, but she decided to put herself out there and be so bold as to sing her cover letter. And um, so I wanted to share that because I thought it was a good thing to talk about courage of doing something really bold and different. Now, um, can somebody can somebody just type in the comments? I've shared my screen in Be Live. I can see it. Gina, can you see it? I see it as well. Can, Next can anybody hand. just say, yes, I can see it. So I know that it's not just Gina and I. <laughs> um, and then I'll, I'll play the I'll play the video. Someone can just let us know. Oops. There we go. Share a link. Share a link. We could also share the link. Uh, which no, I think we just click and open it and play. Yeah, I'm going to do that, and uh, then I will. I will share the link. So here we go. We're not going to listen to the whole thing, oh, but I'm going to take the reins on this one because interviews are boring and resumes are boring, and this is fun. Even though my resume is super impressive. But I have this crazy idea. Just let me know if you agree that this song is a stretch, but I gotta catch that there's something in me you might see. Something that then I've been to your company. Now you know I probably don't believe ya. When you write thank you and you get right back to ya. Okay, I we we could listen to this forever. Yeah. <laughs> it goes on for three minutes. It's a really long song, but it's adorable. And the whole thing is she's singing Hire Me. But it's gone viral. My prediction is she will be on Ellen um, and all these talk shows soon because it's so funny and well done. And um, but she had to be bold enough to go, OK, I'm going to put not only a video of myself in my cover, you know, to send with my cover letter, but I'm going to sing a song. Yeah. with me. Yeah. And and um, I put the link in the chat, but I don't know if I did it right. So if I didn't do it right, I will. Uh, I will share it. Yeah. In the, uh, in the, with, with the video after. So what do you think, uh, Gina, we, we as business owners, what do we learn from, um, 
from that. Paige. Her, her name is Paige Kimna. And I think when I watched it, I just thought, first of all, how awesome, number one, that she has a great voice. Um, but number two, even if she didn't, it was so clever. It was so different and it was refreshing. And I thought, you know, in business, sometimes we're afraid to be too out there and too different because, I mean, people are going to say, you know, okay, that was really weird that you sang your, your message or that's really weird that you did that kind of video or that you're doing a Facebook live with wine and, you know, whatever in your pajamas. You know, there's, there's people that are going to always say something and criticize us. However, to be bold enough to say, I don't really care. I want to get my message out in a way <coughs> that's very different. So I, I think as businesses, we could learn from that. Yeah, I will. I will. Put, I know there are people saying I can't see the link. I put it up there, but that's that's too long. So I will. I will put it at the end of the program when it when it's live. Uh, Gina, unless you can figure out how I'll to. Do it. Yeah, I can do it from. I'll go to Facebook and do it. Okay. Um, and so I wanted to talk about something else that I, that I thought was, was really courageous this week. And sometimes when the, the situation, when the royal proverbial whatever hits the fan, uh, we need to be, we need to be courageous. So I'm going to, I'm going to show my screen one more time and, um, and show you this. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard about this, but, um, Kentucky fried chicken in the UK, uh, switched suppliers, delivery people, um, and ran out of chicken. Oh yeah. And, that's and, so and it was it like, it was a mess. People yeah. were so unhappy. There were viral videos. One customer actually said, um, I actually had to go to Burger King at which point Burger King joined the conversation and, and offered to give them free hamburgers for a year. But that's not the point. <laughs> the point is look, look at what, um, Look at what Kentucky Fried Chicken did. Like that's an outrageously courageous step. It got noticed. I mean, the fact that they even played with their logo to say they were sorry is yeah. really, really. And you got to think that somebody somewhere was going before they launched this. Should we? Should yeah, we? this might be really risky. And that, and that's the leap of faith. And it's like the Tide commercial that we, we the Super Bowl Tide commercial we talked about a couple of weeks ago. I'm sure somebody was sitting in a room going, really? We're really yeah. going to do this? We are going to like totally, totally uh, uh, do something outrageously courageous. So um, I, I think all of us need to, in certain circumstances, just make sure that we... Um, we are ready to be courageous. And so I think it, it, it might be fun to talk about what areas of our lives and our businesses we, we need to be more courageous in. Well, and I'll, and I'll share a story that I shared. Oh, uh, let's see. It must have been on one of my, um, it was in a thing I did in our DIY social group because we got to talking about what's the craziest things we've done to market our business. And I talked about the time I did reverse shoplifting and where when I was trying to get my book out and it was on Amazon and it was in some local book uh, stores in Colorado, but I was trying to get Barnes and Noble to pick it up and they hadn't yet carried my book in the, the distributor chain. So I brought a few of my books and I walked into Barnes and Noble and I reverse shoplift. I put them on the shelf and then I took one of them and I went up to the counter as if to, to buy it. And I put the book there and they scan it and it doesn't come up as in their system. And so they, she scanned it. She said, that's really weird. I don't even have this in my system, but of course they're going to sell it to me. So she had to enter it into their system, the ISBN number. And then I did get another order for it, but I left two of them on the shelf faced out, of course. And I, I bought my own book. Now that was something that was I, I, I don't know why I was worried, like, okay, am I going to get in trouble for putting books in a store? But, yeah. you know, there was that kind of feeling of, I think I could get in trouble for this, but I did it anyway. And um, so that's, you know, you think of little things you can do. There wasn't a lot of, that wasn't a big leap of faith, but it was just something bold and audacious to do. So I think sometimes in our business, maybe those are the little things we have to do to stretch that muscle so that we can do bigger things. But, but see, here's the thing, Gina, and, and maybe even on this call, there, there are people thinking, like, that's nuts. That's <laughs> it was nuts. You did. That was so <laughs> courageous what you did. I mean, I'm a fairly courageous person. I'm not sure I would walk into a bookstore and put my book on the shelf. 
Like, yeah, I, I put it on there. And now here's a tip if anybody wants to try this. Don't pay for your book with your credit card. Ah. Then they'll see the author and they'll see your name and they match. And, you know, your cover's blown. Exactly. So you have to pay for cat, pay for it with cash. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think it's one of those things that looking at how do I overcome that's why I was saying adversity or obstacles, or maybe it's just, I want to do something. I mean, KFC, we want to get a message out there. How do we do that? How do you get creative and do that in a way that's really bold um, in our business? I'd love to hear if anybody's done like something crazy bold in their business um, with even taking on new, um, you know, new parts of your business, new services that you offer. Sometimes that's a big risk. I read a story today, uh, not today, this week about rag and bone. And for, for people who, who don't know it, it's a fashion, uh, a fashion brand. And what I thought was really interesting is, uh, they've decided to not do fashion shows anymore. Okay. Now you got to think that a, that a fashion brand who's decided not to do fra fashion shows anymore and, and to market their clothes in a different way. That's an incredibly, for me, outrageously courageous move. And right. so the question, the question that I ask myself then is, what do we take for granted in our businesses? What are the, what are the touch point opportunities that we're just all supposed to be doing? And what would it take to not do them? Like, like how much courage would it take? Now, obviously rag and bone has plan. Um, they do these wonderful marketing films and stuff. So it's not like they stop marketing, but uh, how do you do the unexpected in, in all of our different industries? Now, I, you know, I'm a speaker. I suppose deciding not to speak would, would not, <laughs> would not be for my bank account. But what if it was deciding not to go on the road and speak? Yeah. What it if it was that, deciding, or, yeah. So there are some big, bold, which is a bold move for revenue. Yes. But. Yeah could be that there's reasons that are greater that you have to make those kind of decisions. And I also think values can drive those decisions. I remember when I started in the business, I was a single mom with two kids and, and I turned down a lot of work just because it took right. me away from my kids. So right. uh, other people say that was very courageous. I say that was just the way it's, it was. Decisions, Right. Based on your decisions. And I think sometimes when you're wanting to start a new business or maybe it's a brand that's wanting to start a new line in their business, you know, you can you can just jump out there and do it. But, you know, obviously you want to take calculated risks. So you have to do your planning. But then there's still a point when you do all the planning, you have all the knowledge, you have all the information that you just have to draw the line in the sand and say, I this is the day I do it. And, um, <clears throat> you know, and so I'd love to hear from the people who are listening. Um what do you, what do you, when you think about your business right now and, and is there any part of it or even in your life? Is there any step you're not taking right now because for some reason you feel afraid? And or, and went, or did you let go? Because here's something a couple years ago, I had to let go of a piece of business that was a big chunk of revenue, but it was so draining on us, um, our whole team, that it was, I knew a smart thing to do, but it was a scary decision to make. Um, and it had some big implications. So sometimes it's things we had to let go of. Absolutely. Jim says, we are trade shows without printed pictures. We only hand out cards with our web address. We let people know at the show that 99% of the brochures end up in the garbage, wasteful, bad for the environment. People like it. I bet they do, Jim. And I bet that that really makes you stand out. I think that's awesome. That's awesome. So where else... Yeah, I love that. Where, where in your business are you just not feeling like we're we're launching an online program in the next couple of months? I'm freaking terrified. Like, you know, it, it's a it's a huge for some people. It would not be a leap of faith. For me, it's a huge leap of faith. So well, and I, I think it's a leap of faith long time. because you know it's a lot of work that you're investing. The fears that I think of when I think of launches, there's a fear of okay, if it doesn't go well, is that embarrassing? Um, there's a fear if it doesn't go well, is that a waste of my time? Yes. Um, and it was interesting because somebody that I, I did an interview with this week, he talked about he started his business 14 years ago and, you know, his business is $44 million now a year. And But he said, 
when you first start, you have to look at the long horizon because so many times we launch something like a, a program and we think, okay, I'll give it, you know, three months. If it doesn't work, okay, we can it. We give it six months or if this product doesn't sell. But if you look at it and say, okay, I need to give this the long um, horizon because I have the courage to make the jump right now, but do I have the courage to deal with and tweak and fix and keep working it until it's successful? Yeah. Uh, I think too many times we give up too early on, on new ideas. This is great. Elen says, I'm declaring that by the end of 2018, I will leave to do my research in the Pacific Islands. Yay! And I do not have the income to do it. I yeah. feel I need courage to declare, but I know that by by doing so and by setting a date. Absolutely, Elen. Yeah. Sometimes we just need to put those bold uh, bold goals out there and let people know that we're committed to doing them. Uh, and sometimes I think what's also really interesting is if we are hesitating, which is why I asked what what might some people be hesitating with, is we have to sit down and figure out why. I mean, there is a reason. If we're dragging our feet, there there's a reason we're dragging our feet. But I also think by putting it out there, it starts making it real. Absolutely. It's making it happen. You start telling people. It's like saying, I'm, I'm a writer. I'm an author. I'm, I'm a speaker. I'm a this. I, when you make those bold statements, you start behaving differently and you start setting your goals and priorities every day differently. You make the time to do the things that you said by the end of 2018. I'm going to do this. So what yeah. does that mean today that I have to do to, you know, so I think, I think that's a huge step is putting it out there in public. Um, that you're going to do something is is a is helpful because I look at Tony. What does it take when you're working with companies and they're talking about making these bold, courageous? They have to let go of things that are happening now. They right. have to start doing things different. What do they need to do to actually help people make that leap? Well, are you asking our case? No, and I mean, for like, what advice would you give to yourself? Like, what do you have to do? Because you are at this point of I need to I need to make the have the courage to do it, make the leap. So what what needs to happen so that every day you keep moving in that direction? I think it's a it for me and for our clients, it's the it's the cost of lost opportunity. Mm -hmm. I mean that that sounds very kind of left brainish, but you know, if, if I ask myself, so this book I've been writing for, you know, 186 years, and I've had people say, Well, then just don't write it. And I say, I can't, I can't not write it. I, I, I couldn't live with myself if I not write it. If I, if I not write it, if I not write book, <laughs> I'm not able to live with me. Me not happy. Me not me happy. Me not happy. Me not happy. So, um, so I think it's those things. And it's like, could I live with the loss of the opportunity if I don't do this? And if the answer is yes, then it's not important enough. Right. Get rid of that sucker. But if you're thinking, oh, for whatever reason, emotionally or financially or for business wise, oh, this is an experience I I really want to have, even though I'm terrified. Then you got to pull yourself together and do it. And so for our clients, it's very much the cost of lost opportunity. If they don't stand out in the marketplace and if they don't figure out a way to be different about how they talk about their brand, then they're going to lose business. Which that's a big motivator. So that's a, that's one piece that I look at and say, okay, that would help motivate me to, okay, we have to make this happen. Still scary. Um, it still is going to take courage to do. And then I think it's just every day and, and maybe, especially when you're working with a team, it's every day having those conversations. Like this is normal. It, yes. It's normal for, for us to feel nervous, scared, um, whatever the feelings are that we're feeling that to make people okay with that. And that, like, this is a normal experience. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think all of us have it. It, it. It's, it's, it's not really a choice. I mean, Heidi, Heidi is saying, uh, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? And, and somebody else asked me the other day, what would you do if you weren't afraid? And you know, those questions are out there. The reality is we can fail. And, and, we are at some point afraid. So the, the question is, how do we deal with those? Well, it's interesting. Yes, um, yesterday I was in a conversation with somebody. We were talking about the cost of failures. And looking over our careers, 
what has been the cost of some of our failures? And then we said, what if, let's say that we said, okay, the cost, I lost $40,000 in this one thing that we, we, we thought we were going to go down this direction. It was a $40,000 uh, failure. But I said, what if somebody told you, okay, do you want to get a master's degree in, in successful entrepreneurship? What, and I told you that master's degree was going to cost you $60,000. And which is still low when you look at getting a master's degree in the States. So you look at they go, would you say over a four year period, I would invest that to get my master's degree in something. And many people say yes. So why is it when we have these failures that cost money, we see it as the end of the world instead of that was a lesson that I paid $40,000 to learn, but I guarantee I won't make that mistake again. Um, yeah, see, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have even called that a failure. Well, yeah, but that's what I mean. If we look at it different in, in our business, we tend to look at things like I lost money or I lost this instead of saying, look at what you learned in trying that. And along the way, I met some really important people that may play a role down the line somewhere else. But, you know, it's all part of the journey. We have to reposition the word failure in our, in our vocabulary because launching this program for you, what is it that we fear? Well, we fear failure in, in this, but what if we knew there was going to be failure points that we would have to learn and tweak to get to the other side? What if we knew there was failure um, ahead, but we still had to make the jump because we knew we had to fail a couple times to get to where we need to go? I don't know. I, I, I think I, when I think about the online program, and it's 2.30 now, I, I, I'm not afraid of failure. I, I am actually rarely afraid of failure. I think the echo is when I maybe get too close to the computer. I think that's maybe what happens. I get excited and I lean in. <laughs> it's your excitement. All of a sudden everything goes nuts. But yeah, I, 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 I think, um, I think at least for me, and I know for a lot of people who are entrepreneurs, failure is part of the, the journey. It doesn't mean that it, that it doesn't suck while you're there, but um, so we've gone from courage to being outrageously courageous to failure and hopefully back to being, um, courageous. to being courageous. Well, don't you think after any any leap that you, you went through, whether there was failure involved or not, you, you have more courage for the next time? Absolutely. You have more courage because you have more experience. Right. And you know you can deal with it, what, whatever it was and whatever it will be. And then, of course, there are people out there like Heidi who are were yeah. dealing with a whole other level of of courage so so we can't really speak to that but um i think we learn and we grow and that little thing inside of us gets just a little stronger and uh and then it's not so hard to take the leap of faith the next time because you know you'll survive right like i can do i we always laugh and say i can do hard things yes. and after you do a hard thing the next time you go i i know i can survive this because i survived that hard thing yeah Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, it is um, 2.30, even a couple of minutes after. So this has been an awesome show. This might yeah. be one of my favorites ever, ever, ever. This is great. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, um, Gina, you did post the link. I saw it go by of the uh, crazy singing uh, yeah. resume. Resume, cover letter girl, page. Yes. Yeah. Um, and thank you, everybody. I see so many familiar faces and faces. And thank you for dropping by and me happy. Me, me happy. <laughs> and uh, and uh, we will see you next week. Have a great weekend and week. And we'll see you next week on Time Wind Down. Wind Down. Time to wind down. Have a great weekend, everyone. Bye, everybody.